If you do not know Jesus Christ, I pray that you would put your trust in him before you leave this place tonight. Well, we're going to continue something we started a few weeks ago. Uh, we have been just called it Elder Evenings and giving uh, each one of our elders an opportunity to come and to share with you a little bit about their testimony, a little bit from their heart and from the Word of God. And so we, a few weeks ago, you heard from Sterling, and, and he shared about uh, not only his testimony, which is just a, a powerful uh, witness to the, to the grace of God. I'm so thankful uh, just for the way that he's using. Tonight, Mike Hall is going to come. Uh, he's been serving uh, on our elder board for several years now. And, and I, I told you, really, the, the heart behind this is that you can see what I get to see uh, as we meet uh, as leaders each and every week. I get to see their love for you. I get to see their love for the Lord. And I want you to see that. I want you to know the men who are praying for you, who are shepherding you. And so, Mike, if you would come and share tonight from the Word. Well, I trust you all had a good, happy Father's Day and, and uh, heard from your kids. And uh, that's a special time that for most of us. Sometimes it isn't. Some of us have bad, uh, have hard times at Mother's Day and Father's Day. But as, we, as the pastor said, we, we've talked about in our elders meeting about uh, you, us sharing our hearts with you. And let me say this before I get started. It's a privilege to, to serve. It's a privilege to serve with these men. Uh, I never, these are the greatest guys I've ever served with, they really are. They love the Lord and they love you as a church. And our pastor, a lot of you don't know how much time he spends in God's word, but uh, he spends a lot of time in prayer. You know you know somebody's heart when you listen to them pray. And I love to hear our pastor pray. And that it tells me his heart. And you know, before I go on any further, you know we have a men's prayer room on Saturday morning where we gather and we pray. And I've got to know some of our men. I don't want to get emotional, but it's, it's hard for me not to. That's just who I am. But uh, I got to know Pastor Bill there was a man that prayed. He loved his church. He loved you. And when he was sick, Pastor Bill, when he prayed, you never knew he was sick. It just was amazing. And there's some other people, they're not here. We have prayer warriors in our church, and we're, we've lost some prayer warriors, you know, over the years. Terry Hazlett's one I think of, always prayed for his, for his brothers. And he's special to me. He was a friend. But uh, let's, let's start with my testimony. When I was a little fellow, I went to Lutheran Church when I was a little boy. And, and my grandmother had a great influence on me. Uh, she sang, first time I ever heard about Jesus, she'd sing the song, Jesus Loves Me. This I know just like we sang after we had commun communion this morning. And... I didn't realize what she was doing. She was planting the, the Word of God, the seed, in my heart. And as I grew up, we went to, went to the church, and, and uh, my mom and dad took me to, me and my brother, to talk to the pastor. And I was told to pray a prayer and was talk, talk to me about what Jesus did for me on the cross. And then I was baptized and confirmed into the church. But as I grew up, I knew I didn't have Jesus in my heart because my life was not what it ought to be. And the Lord directed me to my wife. And, you know, it's this Lord's testimony. It's not mine. It's what he did for me and, and how he drew me and how God uh, used different things, used her in my life to keep me in church. And I'll never forget, uh, our children were small. And she left, and, and I need to be alone. That's, that, the Lord knew what he was doing. He always does. But uh, uh, Billy Graham crusade was going on, and I would never watch something like that normally. I wasn't interested in it because I wasn't saved. But I did. The Lord 
put it on my heart to watch. I sat and watched. He preached the message John in John chapter 3. You must be born again. And I never heard that before. It never penetrated my heart. And uh, that message did. Because I remember he said, you could be a Sunday school teacher. You could be baptized to all the frogs in the creek know who you are. But, uh, you know, without Christ, heaven won't be your home. And it's just like it spoke right to my heart. I mean, it did. And I never realized that I was lost. I thought because I had knowledge of what Christ did for me in my head. I had, uh, you know, I went to church. I did all the right things. I've been baptized. But my life wasn't right. I knew it. And uh, I had desires for things that I shouldn't be having desires for. I, my life was not. And, you know, that's the thing. As, as I tell you the Lord's testimony, that's the concern I have for, for our church, that there be somebody here that hears the word of God, but it's not penetrated into his heart. Because that's, that's the key. That's the key. God's after our hearts. He wants to mold and make us, and he loves us. And, you know, let, let's turn to, uh, if you've got your Bibles, turn to uh, Proverbs. Turn to Proverbs chapter uh, 4. And uh, let's ver look at verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it is the issues of life. Look at the look at First Samuel. First Samuel chapter uh, six. First Samuel chapter sixteen. This is talking about the anointing of David. And uh, here's what the Lord said: But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on the countenance or on the height of the stature, because he has refused him. For the Lord seeth, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth, but the man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh upon the heart. So the Lord looks on unto our hearts. Let's let's look at uh, let's look at uh, Luke. Go to Luke real quick. I know I'm going a lot of places, so get your swords ready. <laughs> uh, Luke chapter six. And we're going to be looking at verses 43 through 45. And this is talking about the tree and its fruit. <clears throat> Everybody there? I like to hear the pages turn. For a good tree bringeth forth, a good tree can bring, cannot bring forth corrupt fruit, neither does the corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by its fruit. For its thorns, men do not gather figs, nor, nor brambles, bushes, gather, they gather grapes. A good man out of a good measure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man bringeth forth evil treasures of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. Notice, notice uh, to understand this, these three verses, I think we need to look at verse 40. Look at verse 40 real quick. For the disciple is not above his master, but every one that is perfect shall be as his master. In other words, the, the uh, teacher will be like the student. Uh, the uh, tree will be like the, the fruit. The fruit will be like, will produce, will produce fruit. So each, uh, an apple tree doesn't produce peaches. A uh, pear tree doesn't produce grapes. A fig tree doesn't, other it produces its, its, its kind of fruit. And as, <clears throat> as Christians, if our hearts, if we're saved, we'll, we'll produce fruit. And, and I've had a lot of people ask me in Sunday school class, and I've, I've asked this question myself. People who say a prayer and ask, you know, have a, say a prayer and, and they don't change and you wonder why do they not produce any fruit? There's something wrong. Uh, you know, if, you're, if, if, if your appetite don't change, when I got saved, my appetite changed. Uh, you, do, you, you as a kid, you know, my mom used to 
like put vegetables before me. There's certain ones I didn't care for. And before I could have dessert, I had to eat these. These, these she made me try it. And, and uh, you know, after I, got, after I got older, some of those things I liked. You know, like I didn't used to like spinach at all. You know, kids don't like spinach. And, and you know, now I kind of like it. But that's what happened when I got saved. My appetite changed. And, and you might say, well, what's that got to do? Well, my heart changed. And if your heart changes, you're going to change. You're going to have a desire to be in God's house. You're going to have a desire to be in God's word. And so if your heart's not right, if you're not producing, there's something wrong. Notice, notice in verse 45 here it says, a good man out of a good treasure of his heart. Let's, let's translate. I think a better translation of that is, is uh, stored up in his heart. That's, 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 that, I think that's a more one that we understand a little bit more. Just read it that way. God uh, is stored up in his heart, bringeth forth good fruit, and an evil man, the evil is stored up in his heart, he bringeth forth what, that which is evil. So what we store up in our heart, what we allow into our minds, see our minds and our hearts are connected. What we allow into our minds stores up in our heart. And it's so important. We talk to our young young folks about what you what you see, what you what you uh, think about. It's important that that our, keep our minds pure. And and the Bible talks about purifying our hearts. In Matthew, you don't need to turn there. Matthew five eight says, "Blessed is is the pure at heart, for they shall see God." And uh, turn over to James real quick. James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So we need to draw nigh unto God, and, and he'll draw nigh unto us. I mean, draw unto his word. He'll purify our hearts through his word. And, and uh, in, in Psalms 119, uh, verse, verse 11 says, hide the word of God in your heart that you might not sin against God. When we put the right things in our hearts, it'll keep us from sin. Doesn't mean we'll be perfect, but it'll keep us from it. It'll be, it's there. When you have the word of God memorized, it, it, it's, an, it, it's a big help to you. When, you. when you have trouble come up, and, and a lot of times we think about kids, it's only for kids to memorize verses. Well, if this old guy can memorize verses, you can. I don't tell you that much. Uh, we... We need to hide the word of God in our hearts. It's like the Bible says, to keep us, it'll keep us from sin. It'll keep us from, from straying away from God. No wonder God called us sheep. Don't we tend to stray? I do, if I'm not careful. Not, not in God's word every day. Uh, I, I can, it's easy to get strayed away. And uh, look over at uh, Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. I know Troy covered it last week, but... Uh, what, what, we, what we put into our minds is important. What we think about is really important. So uh, look at verse, verse 8 of chapter 4. Finally, brothers, whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things that are honest, whatsoever things that are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, and whatsoever things are good, report, if there be any virtue in, in them, then, and, and praise them, and think upon these things. Well, you know, what we think upon is important. One of those things is true. The Word of God is true. It's truth. Um, in, in the high priestly prayer that Jesus prayed in John 17, 17, said, Sanctify thyself through thy word, for thy word is truth. What we, what we put into our mind, the Word of God is truth. We can, we can take it to the bank. We know it's truth. It's God's Word. And that's why we need to be in His Word every day. And we need to, to uh, meditate upon his word. Think about it. What did Mary do when she heard in, in Luke chapter 2, verse 19, Mary said she pondered these things in her heart, all these things that God told her was going, going to be. She pondered upon them. She thought about them. And that's what we need to do as Christians is think about what God is saying. You know, when we read God's word, do we take time to meditate upon what we're reading? I, I, I think sometimes I have problems reading because I have slow focusing. I have eye problems, and, and I can't read for hours at a time. I wish I could, but I can't. That's just, just the way it is. So you pray for me that I can be able to do better at that. But 
my eyes don't, when I look at something, it takes me a while to focus on them, but that's just something I have to live with, and praise the Lord, I'll, I'll just do the best I can, and he'll help me. He always has. But, but we need to be in God's word and have it hit in our hearts that we don't fall into sin and fall in. We see so many people, so many young people, you know, being, young people being God's word. Uh, you're making big decisions now. A lot of you are gradu you've gradu graduating. You're, you're uh, out of school this summer. Maybe you're not graduating, but there's, there's going to be a lot of temptations out there. And be careful what you, what you get involved in. Be careful. Ask the Lord to give you wisdom and guidance in, in what you do. Uh, you know, it just seems like we see kids at a young age uh, going out into eternity, you know, without Christ. And, and it's so important that you know the Lord as your personal Savior, but not, not just because you pray to prayer, but is he in your heart? If he's in your heart, you're going to produce fruit. You're going to, I'm not trying to get anybody to doubt their salvation, but you'll produce fruit. You'll have a desire for it. And, and uh, I just my prayer is for you, you young folks, and I, I praise the Lord for Troy, for, for stepping in and being our uh, youth leader, we spent a lot of time in prayer about that, and, and it's just good to see our youth program growing and our children coming and looking forward to Bible school and, and uh, just keep on keeping on for the Lord. That's my encouragement to you. That's what my desire is, that you become more like Christ. And that's my desire for the church, that each one of us would just become more like Christ. And the only way we can do that is to be in God's Word. If the only time that you come to church is you read your Bible, that's not enough. Do you eat? Do you eat every day? We do. We eat three times a day journey. Some of us more than that. But it's so important that we be in the Word of God on a daily basis and let Him speak to our hearts and, and challenge us and, and guide us. And <clears throat> turn over to, uh, I'm going to finish up here at, uh, on Hebrews. In Hebrews uh, chapter 12, or chapter 4, verse, verse 12, excuse me. Everybody there? For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even into the dividing and sunder the soul and the spirit and of the uh, joints and the mar, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, that gets right to the point, doesn't it? Notice that the, the starts out the word of God. So let's kind of focus on that and narrow that down a little bit. But what about the word of Christ? The gospel uh, <clears throat> is more powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. It pierces and divides asunder of the soul and the spirit. That's what the Word of God does. That's why it's so important for us to be in His Word. <clears throat> it cuts into our heart. It, uh, it knows the intents of our heart. Nothing uh, evades His scope. Nothing evades what, what's going on in our life. There's nothing we can hide from God. God knows exactly what you're thinking. He knows exactly what's in your heart. And it'll pierce in there and it'll cut. You ever uh, cut your fingernail, have your fingernail split down to the quick, how it hurts? That's why the Word of God, it cuts into the, uh, the, the core of your, who you are. When we talk about, do you ever say to some, wonder what makes that person tick? Wonder what makes that person, what motivates that person? Well, you be around them a little while and listen to them talk. And you'll find out what, you're around someone who is a, uh, a golfer, they'll talk about golf. You're around someone who uh, likes to fish, they'll talk about fish. They know all about fishing. I love fishing. That's one of, my, one of my hobbies, and I love sports. But you know, there's nothing wrong with fishing and nothing wrong with sports, but don't let them be the center of your, your, your thoughts and your, your that, that's the only thing that motivates you. The, the things that motivate you should be God's word and, 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 his, and you want to please him. And the only way we can do that is by being in his word. And I know we say that a lot. The pastor says it. Your Sunday school teachers say it. But it's so critical that each one of us be in the word of God every day and, and, and pray. Be in, be in prayer. And uh, remember, he that's in you is greater than he that's in the world. And uh, let's look at uh, one more one more verse I thought we'd look at is uh, what we just sang a little while ago, Psalms 119, 139. Psalms 
Psalms 139. says, let's look at verses 23 and 24. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. What the psalmist David saying there is, is God alone could discern my heart. And he's asking God to uh, discern his very motives for what he does. Search his heart. And as Christians, that's what we need to do. Search our hearts, ask God to search our hearts and see if there be any wicked thing in there. Because our hearts are deceitful. Uh, the human heart is, is, uh, is evil. It's against, it's, against everything, it's against everything God wants. Our, our flesh is, is enmity with God. We, we, it isn't natural for us to serve God. We have to have that Holy Spirit. And, and you know, if your heart's not right, you, you don't have a chance. Your heart. Before I was saved, uh, I heard messages. I felt guilty about things. But I had no way of getting, to, uh, getting victory. And I knew something was bad wrong. That, you know, when, when things tempted me, I didn't have anything to, the only thing that kept me was fear of being caught. But, you know, now I have a loving Savior that watches over me. And I, the, re, the reason why it's so important to be in God's Word and to look into the Word of God is you look in, you see the love of Christ for you, what he did for you on the cross, how he shed his precious blood for your sins, and he went to the cross and paid a, paid a price you couldn't pay. And if that don't motivate us to live for Christ, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. So I encourage you to just to be in God's Word and have, let him search your heart. Let him, let him uh, uh, get into the recesses of your thoughts. Why do you, why do, you do the things that you do. Why do you serve? I've asked myself that question lots of times. Why do I serve? And I pray it's always because of Christ. I know when Pastor Mike asked me to uh, be, a de uh, be a deacon one time uh, a while back before, before I was an elder, I told him, I said, Pastor Mike, I, I would do those things regardless of whether I had the title or not. And he said, that's why I want you. You know, that's the thing. We, we, I, we need to serve because we love Jesus. I'm not an elder because that, 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 I don't want the attention. I want God to get the, the praise and the glory. And, and that's why we need to serve, to bring honor and glory to Christ. That's why we need, because you know our young folks, can, they can spot a phony in a heartbeat. I'll never forget hearing a, a young person one time tell me something that just broke my heart. It said, they said they felt the pastor was a good speaker but he didn't believe a thing he preached because of some things that he had done. And I, I looked at him and said, you know, that's possible, but you know, you don't need to look at man, you need to look at Christ. And, and that's something that as a Christian I had to learn. I've struggled with that, watching people. We gotta keep our eyes focused on, on the Word of God and on the Lord Jesus Christ and not on people. I can fail you, your pastor can fail you. Your elders can fail you. We don't want to, but we can because we're, we're human beings. But Christ will never fail you. And, and, and my heart for the church is that you grow. And the only way you're going to grow is to be in God's Word. And the only way I can see you maturing is being in God's Word and, and, and seeing you witness to people and hear you testify that you've witnessed to somebody. That just blesses my heart because I know God's working. And I know it blesses the pastor's heart. To see these young people going out on visitation and sharing the gospel just blesses my heart. And pray for our young folks. Because anytime we see young folks going out and witness for the Lord, the enemy's not going to be happy. You need to pray for them. You need to pray for our teenagers. What an awkward time that is in your life. You remember when you was a teenager. You have a lot of, a lot of stresses, a lot of, a lot of things hitting at you. And, and they need prayer. We need to lift them up in prayer. That's why we need men to come and pray. And I challenge you, men, if you can't come, I know Saturday morning is, is tough for most of you. It's only your only day off, maybe. But whether you pray here or you pray some, but pray for, pray for one another. Uh, that's, that's what we need. I, we need your prayers. Your pastor needs your prayers. I need your prayers. 
and, and we all, we need each other. We're a family, just like the pastor said, this is a family, and family take care of one another. So just spend some time in prayer for, get your prayer uh, list out, your bulletins you got, and, and pray for, pick out someone and pray for them. And uh, that's, that's my heart, that you just grow and be mature as Christians, and then uh, I can be some help, I pray, and God will use me in some way to, to encourage you to be more like Christ. And that's, that's my heart for you all. And I just thank you for the opportunity I have to, to serve. And, and I just pray that if, if your heart's not right with God, that you'll take care of that. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, maybe you prayed a prayer one time and, and uh, there's not been change in your life. My heart's desire is that you know the Lord as your personal Savior. Thank you, Pastor.